two short pieces that um, are both about topics of interest to me. One is about lemons, uh, the other deals with uh, mythical monsters, um, <laughs> this is my style. Um, and actually I realized earlier today that they are both in plural first person, which is kind of an unusual thing in fiction. Uh, so the first one I'm going to read is called Lemon Tree. We laid Grandma to rest in the yard beneath the lemon tree. The doghouse sat in its shade, though the dog had run away. Right then, the lemons began to swell from the blossoms. We didn't notice them. We stood there at the grave with our heads bowed, exhausted from grief, too stunned to cry. A lemon fell at our feet, making a crater in the moist earth. Grandma always loved that tree, though she wouldn't eat the fruit. Too sour, she said, and puckered up. Grandma, with white silk hair and a braid, blue-tinged teeth, and a wooden cane stolen from a witch with one leg so she couldn't give chase. But can't witches fly, we asked. Grandma with teas that could cure sadness, with crumpled lists in her pocket, written in script we couldn't decipher. Grandma with her spicy stews, her dark pudding with its skin on top, her wooden salad bowl she said belonged to her mother's mother's mother that she rubbed down with cloves of garlic. Grandma with orchids perched atop the beams of our two-level round house. Dome, sweet dome, Grandma liked to say. The orchids bloomed all year round, their leaves growing so big they covered the window. The lemons grew overnight, fat and thick-peeled, big-nippled and stipple-skinned. We collected them in our aprons. Their sourness was sharp as a fine blade. We made lemon pies, lemon cream, lemon bars, lemon jam, lemon oil, the way Grandma had taught us. They tasted divine, like the most exquisite sorrow. We garnished fish we caught ourselves in the stream. With the rest, we carved faces into the peel, made up the characters of good and evil, and put them to work in place. But the lemons kept coming. Every morning there were more. They filled the yard, tumbled down in piles towards the house. The smell was intoxicating. The ones at the bottom rotted sweetly, adding a fermented scent to the fresh fruit like a citrusy wine. All day we hefted buckets of lemons, bailing out the yard. But each morning it was full again. We put on our old snow boots and began to stomp on them, reducing the top layer of fruit to pulp. The juice squirted us in the face and made our eyes red and swollen. We killed them, we said. The doghouse got filled up, then buried. The tire swing disappeared. We could no longer open the back door. We watched from the only window in the house as the wooden fence began to buckle and bulge. Later, the window cracked. Then it shattered in the night and the lemons filled the sink beneath it. They rolled across the floor, hit the wall, hit under grandma's rocking chair. In the morning, we found them in the dog's bed, under the couch, and inexplicably in drawers and under cushions. Grandma, stop, we cried, but she couldn't hear us. She was dead. We scrambled up the crooked stairs to the second floor, sang loudly as we could to drown out the thumps and bumps as the lemons began to fill the downstairs. It was as if they could move of their own will, rolling this way and that. We crunched against the wall with our hands over our faces. If the house had had corners, that's where we would have gone. We were hungry, yet nauseated from the scent. Rot and sad sweetness, earth and fruit pies, perfume, that's what they smelled like. We were beginning to realize that we were homeless, that the dog was never coming back. It's too late to make any more pies, isn't it, we said. And as the stairs began to moan and creak, we both began to laugh until tears rolled down our faces, fat as lemon seeds. That's the first one. <laughs> so that was Lemon Tree. Um, the next one I'm going to read is a little lighter. This is a... Uh, the new chief of Cyclops Island makes five promises. The afternoon we chose the new chief of Cyclops Island, we stood in a circle at the top of the isle's highest peak, heads drooping as we squinted and sweated in the sun. The chief positioned himself in the middle of the group, and from there he made us five promises. The first was to put an end to the overeating of the sheep, since they couldn't breed fast enough to keep up with our appetites. Even as he said this, our lips were stained with blood, our nails brown with sheep gore. We looked at our feet. Soon there would only be lambs crying for their mothers. Then, no lambs. After that, well, we didn't like to talk about that. Somewhere on the island were the hulking, bleached remains of a few giants with one eye hole in the center of their skulls. 
The second promise was to teach everyone how to milk the tiny sheep without making the udders burst. The third had to do with getting a seeing eye sheep for a certain blind cyclops. Everyone had gotten tired of listening to complain about the loss of his eye. The chief vowed to train the sheep himself. The fourth promise was to find females, one for each of us, or even one for all of us. It made no sense, but somehow we were all males. Also, when one of us died, which didn't happen that often as we were pretty much immortal, we missed that guy, and there was no one to replace him. This promise would lead us down a path of loss and disaster. Brothers groping for each other's hands through the waves, our grip too wet to hold. But we didn't know that then. Now we could see the chief was really going somewhere, building up to the last promise. A froth surrounded his mouth. We licked our lips. A breeze blew in our faces, lifted the stench off our bodies. If we went into the water more, we could bathe, we thought. The chief said we would fashion a raft so we could leave the island and find women. Here he blinked hard. He too was afraid. He was one of us, after all. We would become industrious, he went on. Visitors, creatures, and humans alike would come to our island to marvel at our productivity without fear of being eaten. No more waiting around for ble beached mermaids or shipwrecked sailors, half drowned and with mouths full of wet sand. No more lounging in caves all day, picking our teeth with bones. Finally, he arrived at the last promise. He spoke it in a whisper, barely moving his thick lips. Peace with our father, he said. We bowed our heads. That one required no elaboration. Our father was dead, which meant he never left us alone. We could hear him on the wind and tried to trap his voice under boulders, but it never worked. Without his blessing, we wouldn't get anywhere. We felt it was a good speech, perhaps the best we'd ever heard, we can't be sure. A few of us rubbed surreptitiously at our eye. We knew the chief could never fulfill all of these promises, not even if he were in charge for a thousand years, not even if we never got tired of him and threw him over a cliff to dash his brains on the rocks below. We knew the chief had to know this too, and it was this hopefulness, this daring to make so many and such ambitious promises so full of goodness to us, a bunch of ugly giants, that gave us hope, hope for ourselves, for our future. Hope that in the end, we wouldn't all say to hell with it and just eat each other. Thank you. <laughs>